Hello everyone, welcome to Imprint IS and I'm Barun Kular and we're looking at the Indian Express and the Hindu Daily News Discovery right on 21st of December 2018. So let's look at what all we'll be covering today. Uh, we'll be looking at the Hindu editorial on the DNA bill and it's actually its influence on the right to privacy. Uh, whether the DNA bill actually leads to some kind of uh, issues with the right to privacy judgment of the Supreme Court. Uh, then we look at uh, the transgender bill, which was passed in Lok Sabha, and what are the flaws in it, right? Uh, then uh, we have some very interesting news about how all computers can now be monitored by government agencies. There's a list of 10 agencies which has been given. So object to type question randomly can be made from that. Uh, then what is the advanced tower artillery gun? Uh, this is similar to the M777. Right, and uh, the K9 Vajra, which is basically from South Korea and from the United States, respectively. Uh, Center is seeking 41,000 crore to recapitalize the banks. Uh, this is as a supplementary grant. Uh, rupee is hitting at 69.7, uh, right, against the dollar. So that's good news, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then we have uh, government may infuse uh, 2,345 crore in uh, uh, Air India. Sorry. Uh, then uh, we have RBI, uh, it caps the outstanding ECBs at 6.5% of GDP. So first we'll uh, try to find out what are ECBs, right? Uh, then uh, there are more bullet injuries than uh, bullet in, uh, pellet injuries in the full pharma incident. So that's another topic that we'll be covering today. Okay, first first is uh, general studies two, that is poverty, governance and higher related news. So first is uh, this uh, article uh, by, you know, Surit Parthasarthi, and he's an advocate practicing at the Madras High Court. So let's see what this is. Uh, basically, what it's saying is uh, the draft statute, right, which has been approved by the union cabinet in July, right, did I, you know, basically it's saying that it disregards the serious ethical dilemma that are attendant to the creation of a national DNA database but are also contrary to the established wisdom and it treats uh, you know virtually the dna as you know obviously infallible and as a solution to you know all the problems of the criminal justice system and what is more what it basically thinks is that the infringement of civil liberties caused by obviously indiscriminate collection of dna is a legitimate trade off made in the interest of ensuring superior justice delivery that is okay ki, you know in case let's say aapke ghar aake bhi aapka saman le jaye koi because jaise aapke baal collect karke usme dna le lijiye so again that is uh, acceptable that is what it means the draft uh, you know law seeks to create a dna database which will be based on base indexes obviously a crime scene index would be there let's say people who are in the crime scene can be a part of that the suspect index then offenders index and this will also lead to facilitate the identification of persons so you know good thought i would say the proposed law basically you know is vague on how it intends to maintain this dna bank because obviously whether it will be in the private sector or public sector and if it's a private sector obviously you know this collection of dna evidence uh, right uh, obviously is not just for civil but also for determination of uh, you know uh, criminal disputes and civil disputes as well so the civil disputes is an issue i would say then the other thing is consent is not required before bodily substance are drawn for a person accused and arrested for an offense punishable with either death or imprisonment and for a term exceeding seven years. So this is there. In other cases, a person may be refused to compel to part with genetic material, right? If a magistrate has reasonable cause to believe such uh, such evidence would establish a person's guilt. And which basically this creates this problem that there is no end to the state's power in coercing a person to part with her DNA. So obviously this is against the right to privacy in some ways. Uh, the state obviously must show that there exists a legitimate reason for extracting DNA evidence and that the extent and scope of such extraction does not disproportionately contravene a person's right to privacy. This is the basic problem that is going to be, you know, how the, are they going to balance this out? Uh, just to have an idea, now, what were the highlights of the bill? All right, that was about the article. So, uh, just to revise, uh, what will happen is the bill, uh, you know, is regulating the, the use of DNA technology for establishing the identity of persons, right, in respect of matters listed in a schedule. And obviously, these are criminal matters, civil matters, parentage disputes are one, right, immigration or immigration is one, transplantation or human organs are also as one. Then, uh, as we already talked about the crime scene index, the suspect index, there's offendix, there's a missing person, which is, I think that this would really help, right? Uh, you know, DNA uh, database would really help for this. And the unknown 
disease person index. So these two things are not mentioned in the article, right? And these uh, are definitely something that you should. So in case, let's say a question is asked, I think you should draw a diagram, you know, using these five. So you can actually make this, you know, the DNA bank right here. And uh, here you can actually write the crime scene index, right? And here you can write the under trial index. Then here you like can write the missing person. And uh, with that, you can actually make a nice diagram in the for the answer. Then the bill establishes a regulatory DNA board. So what does this do? This establishes the entity of individual and has to be treated by this board. So this is obviously how this will happen, who will be the head and all that needs to be done. Written consent is required to collect DNA samples from them. Consent is not required for offenses. This has also been mentioned that if somebody has a seven years or more imprisonment or death, that will not be there. Then bill uh, provides for removal of DNA profiles of suspects on filing of a police order, court order. On the, you know, if uh, you know the, I think, uh, in the same way, you know that that the, that the magistrate can actually uh, provide for this, that the DNA should be given. And profiles in, uh, you know, crime scene and missing person index will be removed on a written request. So this is also there. Okay, uh, this is uh, I think a good step. Uh, what are the issues uh, concerns? Uh, the schedule lists civil matters where DNA profile can be used, and these include issues relating to establishment of individual identity. And uh, DNA testing carried out in medical or research laboratory can be used to identify an individual. Okay, and the problem is how do you regulate such laboratories? The second is obviously the consent of the individual when DNA profiling is used in criminal investigation and identifying missing persons, right? Uh, the consent requirement has not been specified for you know the DNA profiling for civil matters. Uh, what kind of consent would be there? The DNA uh, laboratories are required to share DNA data with DNA data banks. Okay, and it's unclear whether DNA profiles for civil matters will also be stored in the data bank. And obviously, uh, if you have a civil case and if something like this is there, right, this might violate the right to privacy. Then the DNA labs prepare uh, DNA profiles and share them with DNA data banks also. And uh, this bill specifies uh, the process by which DNA profiles may be removed, uh, right? How the bill does uh, not require the DNA laboratories to remove DNA profiles. And these should be actually be included in the bill and not left to regulations. Okay, the next is by Ajita Banerjee, and she is a researcher on gender and sexuality rights based in New Delhi. Uh, so she basically has talked about the transgender community being let down. And she says the Lok Sabha passed the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Bill 2018, right? But what has happened is that the bill, which is ostensibly aimed at, you know, protecting the transgender person's rights has been hastily drafted with no real understanding of the gender issues, you know, gender identity and expression, right? And, uh, you know, this is a big, big problem. She basically has been arguing that uh, the directions of the Supreme Court in National Legal Service Authority, right, was the Union of India and Alsa 2014, which affirmed the right to self-determination, right, uh, without any mandate of medical certificate or reassignment surgery, right, uh, has been, you know, uh, you know, not been taken in, right, because what this bill says is the bill proposes setting up a district screening committee comprising five persons, including a medical officer, a psychiatrist, to certify a transgender person. So this is against the uh, you know, spirit of the Supreme Court judgment. Then uh, she's talked about that this is a regressive bill, right? It uh, doesn't appreciate uh, right, the fact that most of these people have to uh, beg right, to survive, and that's something there. Okay. Uh, for the example, right, uh, the bill criminalizes being, uh, thereby targeting transgender persons who rely on begging for right uh, the sustenance. Such provision disregarded the livid priorities of transgender people from begging is often the last resort. And then uh, the bill also fails to protect persons who are you know victims of sexual assault. Right. And IPC obviously remember uh, recognizes rape in terms of men and women and as a perpetual victim. Uh, it makes uh, so the bill basically makes sexual abuse punishable with a disproportionate punishment of imprisonment only up to two years. And it does not define the acts that constitute sexual offense. And it makes it difficult for transgender people to report such crimes and access justice. Further, obviously, the bill does not grapple with the reality of civil rights, 
marriage, civil partnership, property rights, etc. So obviously, uh, all the constitutional guarantees that were provided by Supreme Court Nalsa are, you know, not mentioned here. Now, what um, the you know, Ajita Bhaji says is that, uh, you know, typically the hopes are now pinned on the Rajya Sabha. And it will be you know, hope. It is hoped that the bill will be revised and brought in line with the Nalsa judgment to ensure full realization of the transgender persons' right, fundamental rights. So this is there. Okay. Uh, right here, I've summarized on the article again. Right. So you know, please go through this uh, for your notes. Keep it for this. Right. Uh, so basically, the main points are the fact that the spirit of Supreme Court and Nalsa has not been uh, you know adhered to and that is the main thing and the other thing is obviously the protection you know in the ipc right uh, the bill should also actually update the ipc as well right and obviously the begging part again um, which is criminalizing that's not a good thing to do you know you criminalize begging in the poor country it is actually inhuman when you do that okay uh, just to have a look at the bill uh, it very interestingly, the bill defines a transgender person as one who is partly female and male, or a combination of male or female, or neither female or male. In addition, the gender must not match the gender assigned at birth. It includes trans women, trans men, persons with intersex variations, and gender queers. So the definition is kind of vague. Uh, I think this definition needs work. Uh, then the transgender person must obtain a certificate of identity as a proof of recognition. Now, this uh, you know regulation is not a good thing, right? Because obviously, whenever you have more regulation, so this in mean, this should be self-certified, I would say. And as such, this cert self-certification should be granted, all right, uh, according to me, by the person himself, and obviously it should be maybe screened by the people, uh, or maybe an association of transgender people should screen that certificate itself. Such a certificate should be granted by the district magistrate on the recommendation of a screening committee, and uh, you know such committee should be a medical officer, etc. So this was something which is against the spirit of the Nalsa. Then it prohibits uh, you know discrimination against the chance of the person, in education, employment, healthcare, and it directs to provide welfare schemes in this area. So one thing is that you know Odisha has one, Tamil Nadu has one, which other states? You know all it basically asking all states to have welfare schemes. Then, uh, then offenses like compelling a transgender person to beg, denial of access to public places, physical and sexual abuse would attract up to two year imprisonment and a fine. Then the issue, obviously, uh, the objective criteria to determine, uh, right, uh, is something very, very weird, right? And the Supreme Court has read, held that the right to self-identification of gender is a part of the right to dignity and autonomy under Article 21. So this uh, this part this, this part the certification part goes against this. Now the bill states that uh, you know the person recognized transgender would have the right to be self-perceived gender identity. It does not provide for such a right, and obviously district uh, screening committee thing is very very odds with the NALSA. Then uh, definition of transgender persons in the bill is variance with the definition recognized so this definition itself needs to be changed then uh, the bill includes men like trans men trans women intersex variations queers in the definition of these transgender persons but however these terms have not been defined and certain criminal and personal laws that are currently in force recognize only the gender of man and women so basically the idea would be whether all these laws will also apply to transgender persons or not so maybe a lot of i think the uh, overall notification has to be issued for all uh, acts of parliament that whenever the gender man and women is made it's also refers to transit okay uh, then we are very interesting we have the ministry of home affairs on thursday issued an order authorizing 10 agencies to intercept monitor decrypt any information transmit or receive computer any right and who which are these uh, basically uh, these are uh, the enforcement bureau the intelligence bureau Right, uh, the Central Board of Direct Taxes, Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, Central Board of Investigation, NIA's Cabinet Secretariat, Raw, that is, uh, Directorate of Signal Intelligence uh, for a service area of JNK, Northeastern Assam, and Commissioner of Police Delhi. Now, why the hell is Commissioner of Police Delhi given such a power? Anyhow, and considering the fact, you know, Aam Army Party is there and the Delhi government is there, so, you know, weird things can be thought of here. Uh, the MHA gave authority under Section uh, 69 1 of uh, the Information Act, which says central government can direct any agency 
and after it satisfied that is necessary and expedient to do in the interest of sovereignty of india defense state for friendly relations public order you know preventing incitement to the commission of any cognizable events relating to any investigation uh, or any offense so obviously this is a huge huge problem and if you fail to do so uh, right it will lead invite a seven year imprisonment and a fine okay then we have indigenous um, you know gun so the advanced tower gun is a 155 mm 52 caliber gun and it developed by drdo uh, two people are making it uh, right uh, bharat forge and tata power right two guns are undergo trial and two guns will join trials later right the idea is the sanction of production of 10 guns uh, the ideal weight is seen to be 14 to you know uh, 15 tons but it is you know 18 tons uh, it should be you know obviously the problem is that it weighing too high. much uh, uh, Defense Ministry has approved the purchase of 150 guns at an approximate cost of 3,365 crores, right? And uh, the army itself has uh, started to modernize its weaponry. It has acquired uh, first, you know, the M777 ultra height howitzer. This is extremely light. This is just 4.2 tons. And same with K9 Vajra. It's it's also too uh, light. I think uh, I'm forgetting the amount of weight, but it's also much much less than the 18 tons. It's I think not more than nine. Okay, but the idea is that all of them are lighter than what this is. So that is the main problem that uh, the army is talking about. Right. Um, just to revise, ATAC 155 mm 52 caliber gun developed by DRDO, right, on two parallel tracks. It has many features, so these features may be useful for us uh, in an answer and exam. Significant features all electric drive, high mobility, quick deployability, auxiliary mode, advanced communication system, automated command system, control, etc. And obviously, the army is trying to, you know, do this. So, this is basically something, uh, you know, I think make in India example, especially for defense. So, for defense, this would be extremely good example for that. Uh, then uh, the government has moved a proposal in parliament for an additional 45,000 uh, crore to recapitalize public sector banks over northern, the already 65,000. And this would take the capitalization package for the financial year to 1,6,000 crore, right? And the government basically plans to utilize 83,000 crore over the remaining portion of the year. Uh, the government said the non-profit asset recognition was nearly com complete and the recovery process was obviously very, very strong with 60,000 crores being recovered right in the last one financial year in the half of the year that is right so this is extremely good uh, most psus uh, will get funds except uh, fbi from this right uh, the government had announced a 2.11 lakh crore capitalization plan in October 2017, of which 1.35 lakh crore was to be raised through recapitalization bond. And the rest was supposed to be raised by banks from market or sale of non-core assets. That was the idea. Uh, rupee is doing uh, well. Uh, softening crude prices helped the rupee to strengthen its momentum for a fourth straight session. It depreciated, right? And uh, now it is at something like 69.65. That was the intraday high, right? And uh, uh, what is happening is that the global crude is going down. So crude is actually directly related to uh, inversely proportional to the price of crude, you know, to the price of the rupee, right? So this is doing well for us, I would say. Uh, then we have RBI has capped ECBs at 6.5% of GDP. Uh, that is a soft, uh, you know, limit works out to $160 billion. Right now we have ECBs worth uh, $126 billion. ECBs, what are ECBs? Refers to commercial loans and former bank loans, securitized instruments, credit, supply credit availed uh, of from non resident lenders uh, with a minimum, you know, this is uh, important, average majority of three years. This definition should be, you know, put in your notes. Just to revise again, external commercial borrowings are loans in India made by non resident lenders in foreign currency to Indian borrowers. They are widely used to facilitate access to foreign money by Indian corporations and PSUs. They include what? Bank loans, buyer credit, supplier credit, securitized instruments such as floating rate, uh, rate notes, fixed rate notes, credit from official export credit rating agencies, commercial borrowings from private sector windows of multilateral finance agencies such as ADB, IFCs, AFIC, CDC, etc. Uh, remember, ECBs cannot be used for investment, stock market, or speculation real estate. 
Uh, then we have a center has sought a parliament nod for additional equity infusion of 3,000, so, sorry, 2,345 crores for debt ridden in India. Okay, and a separate sum of 1,300 crores for a special you know, SPV, which houses the national carriers debt and non core asset. Okay, uh, right now in India, uh, you know, holding asset uh, comprises 29,000 crore, of which 55,000 crore debt of Air India and the area non core assets such as the ground handling and arm. Okay, the idea is the purpose is to liquidate the assets to pay off the debt involved in the SPV. Right, uh, so let's see whether this happens. Uh, you know, the government has been, you know, helping it out. Uh, it wanted to divest its stake in the loss making airline earlier. But it obviously made it failure because obviously, uh, you know, it is uh, a white elephant for anyone who buys it. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, an article on ethics and governance, and uh, with the fact that you know that records from hospitals in Kashmir suggest that the 15, uh, you know, December operation resulted in highest number of casualties hit by you know bullets. 20 out of 32 civilians who, whom seven died, right, uh, died from bullets and not pellets. So basically, this is a failure of the uh, standard operating procedure. Okay, so that is something that is, needs to be looked at. That you know, understand standard operating procedure, right? Uh, what normally what happens is that you normally will have you know you'll have lati charged and you'll have you know some kind of a, a water gun. Then you basically uh, go for some kind of chili powder pellets, and then you basically give shoot orders. Here it seems uh, you know they have given shoot orders even before anything else was done. So that's something very, very uh, strange. And I think this should not happen in any part of India, especially in Kashmir. Uh, okay, for the imprint answer writing challenge, we have given two questions. Uh, one is on DNA bill. So the question is DNA bill will give state untrammeled access to the deeply personal and penetrating material. Comment on the features of DNA uh, use and application regulation in 2018. The other question is transgender bill, right? So the person's bill potentially be aimed at protecting the transgender person's rights, but has been drafted hastily with no real understanding of gender identity and expression. I think we have discussed enough about the fact that uh, the definition is very poorly given and other, other issues that an Alsa Supreme Court judgment is not really followed in this bill, right? It seems as the person who made the bill uh, hasn't read the judgment. Okay, let's move ahead, uh, right? Uh, Thank you so much for listening to us. You can join our Telegram group. Uh, a lot of people are writing answers and getting them corrected there.